In my last video, I set up the Elastic Stack with Docker Compose. The focus of that video was to set up a different user for every single one of these services. I also use the key store to encrypt any sensitive or secret information that's needed by any of these services. The fleet server didn't have a key store, but I did set up a dedicated user for initializing the fleet server and APM. Any of these sensitive information was automatically encrypted and stored within the fleet server itself. In this video, I want to explain more about the code that's responsible for setting up this entire infrastructure. And as a reminder, all this work is available in this public Git repository over here. And I should also point out that all my work is based off of the tutorial or guides provided by the Elastic team. And in that guide and tutorial, they've also included uh, all their source code. So my work here is based off of here. And I've retained these changes or the original source code within a, uh, within a different branch of the same project. I've put it as original. So this original branch is basically this code here. And the main branch is all our work from our last video from over here. The reason I decided to preserve the original branch is because then you can do something like this. So all this code here is currently the main branch. And if I do a uh, git branch, you can see that the original branch is here. You can do git diff origin original, and you can see what are the differences between my version of the project and the original. And if this is too verbose, you can just summarize things with uh, this command here. And you can see that these are the files that have changed compared with the original branch. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get started. And let me explain line by line uh, what was done to create this infrastructure. So let me summarize at a high level what I did before going line by line in the code. The first thing I need to do was edit this Docker Compose YAML file. That's because I need to make this file start some new containers. The new containers being these green ones over here. I'll call these the setup containers because these containers are responsible for setting up a new user along with the appropriate privileges and storing any sensitive information in the key store. Now, the actual actions of creating users, managing the key store, and setting up privileges, those are actually done by specific shell script files. And this Docker Compose file will reference these shell script files. For example, this setup container it's going to use the Kibana setup.sh uh, file. So that would be this one over here. So this shell script file will actually do the API call to the Elasticsearch REST API and create a new user with the appropriate privileges. And it will also store any sensitive information to the Kibana key store. So this container references this file over here. And this container is responsible for setting up the metric beat service. So this service here will use the beat.setup.sh file. And again, what this file do will, it will make an API call to the Elasticsearch uh, REST API, set up a metric beat user with the appropriate privileges, and then store any sensitive information in the key store. And the file beat setup uh, service, same thing. It actually reuses the beat setup.sh uh, shell script file. Uh, I, just param uh, I just parameterize an argument where I can toggle between metric beat and file beat. But otherwise, the process is still the same. You set up a user, set up the appropriate privileges, and set up the key store. Log stash, similar idea. This will use the log stash setup.sh. That's this file here. And the fleet server will use the fleet server setup.sh. And that would be this one over here. So this one doesn't need a key store, but it will at least set up the appropriate users with the appropriate privileges. And once I've executed these shell script files uh, from, or, uh, from within Docker Compose, then the other thing I need to do was update each of the YAML files 
for each one of these services. Well, actually, in the case of Logstash, it doesn't have a YAML file. It has a configuration file. And what I mean by that is, let's take a look at this, contain, uh, this service. The Kibana service needs a kibana.yaml file. So if I go over to kibana.yaml file, you're going to see that in here it has some configurations. And one of the things that it's going to do is accept a username and password. And rather than reading that, an actual username password in plain text, it's going to read from the key store. So I've updated the kibana.yaml file to uh, in such a way that it reads sensitive information from the key store instead. Likewise, for metric beat, it comes with a metric beat dot yaml configuration file so the metric b yaml configuration file which is uh that this one over here i've re i've updated any access credentials to rely on the key store so that's really the only change i made here and file beat it's a similar idea to metric beat i update the file beat yaml file to rely on the key store uh, for any sensitive connection information or any sensitive information in general. Logstash, if we look at the logstash.configuration, I also updated the content so that it relies on the uh, sensitive information from the key store as opposed to anything in plain text. And just a similar idea for uh, the fleet server setup as well. So that's what I did at a high level. And now we'll actually take a look at the code responsible for all this. So let's start by examining the Docker Compose YAML file because that's where everything starts from. So I'm going to open up the Docker Compose file. And yes, I'm all the way at the top. So you're going to find that much of this file is the same when compared with, uh, when compared with the original Elasticsearch guide that the Elastic team has provided. The top part here, Right. All the volumes pretty much stay the same. The original setup container for setting up the SSL certificates, I haven't actually changed it. So if we go over here, you'll notice that this setup container is responsible for setting up the SSL certificates needed by every one of these uh, services. The Elastic team left it as inline commands here. And for me, it was just a little bit too hard to uh, debug or read through when it's embedded like this. So all I did was I took all those commands and just put it into an elastic setup.sh file. And I parameterized some of the variables that were actually hard coded in here. So you can see, uh, let's say somewhere ah, here. So you can see they just hard coded some usernames and the host name, I've decided to parameterize that and just put it in the elastic.sh file, elastic setup.sh file. Okay. So otherwise all the instructions here are exactly the same as in here. Okay. And all it was doing was check first if the certificate authorities have been made. If it hasn't, then go ahead and create them. Then check to see if the certificates for every one of our Elastic services have been made, uh, or at least the relevant certificates needed by some of these services. If they have not been made, then go ahead and make them. And once they're made, you basically just exit the script. So that's all this does. Nothing about this script has changed uh, compared to what the Elastic team has provided. Okay, And that describes uh, this container over here. Go back to Docker Compose. All right, so once the uh, SSL certificates have been set up, oh, uh, I think I went a little bit too far. Let me go back up. All right, here we go ahead and set up the Elasticsearch service. And this hasn't uh, changed either. This is basically uh, the same as the videos that I've shown two or three uh, videos ago. Right, all the instructions here are the same as the videos that I've been demonstrating in the first few, uh, first three videos. So not much explanation needed in the uh, for this container here. All right, and now we actually come to the Kibana setup container, which is this over here. So this container is new, or it's a service that I've just spin up uh, specific to this project. 
And what we're going to do here is set up the Kibana user along with the key store. So if we look at this, we're going to see that this Kibana service, before it can uh, begin, it depends on the completion of this one, right? So we can't start this until this has finished its job. So if we look at this Kibana setup, all I'm going to do is make sure Elasticsearch is up and running. Once it's up and running, download the Kibana image. And this Kibana image is exactly the same Kibana image as this one over here. Uh, we're going to do some uh, volume mounting and bind mounting. So we're going to need the SSL certificates. We're going to need to have the same Kibana data directory, just like in our uh, earlier videos. Uh, the only difference really is that I've added this uh, one line here. I've, I've bind mounted my Kibana setup uh, scripts to this uh, service and container over here. And then I'm actually going to run it with these arguments. Uh, we're going to have to contact the Elasticsearch host. We'll use the Elastic uh, username. We're going to use the Elastic password. And we're just going to use it once. And you're going to see why uh, when I explain the scripts in here. And we're going to pass in the encryption key. So both of these are going to be, let's say, sensitive pieces of information that we're just going to use once and then Either we're going to use once or we're going to store it in a key store for repeat for repeated usage in the future. So I'll explain that in a moment when we actually look at this script here. Okay. So this script is actually going to set up the Kibana user with the appropriate privileges and, uh, and the necessary configuration for the key store. And then we're going to do a health check. Only when our Kibana key store is actually made and if it uh, when it exists, that's when we consider this setup as successful and completed. And it, when this health check is true, that's the only time when this Kibana service will actually start up. Okay. So with that said, let's actually see what this Kibana setup.sh file does. Let me just go all the way to the top. All right. So here's our Kibana.sh uh, our Kibana setup file. I just want to explicitly uh, put in a few flags to denote the arguments we'll be needing within our script. We're going to need the Elasticsearch user, Elasticsearch host, Elastic password, an encryption key which enables particular features within Kibana. Uh, and we're going to need the APM token, which is a secret token that allows for any instrumented service to submit information to our APM fleet server. Okay. So uh, those are the five variables that I'll be taking in. And I'm just doing, uh, actually, before I do an if statement check uh, for these, the first thing I'm going to do is check if we've already made a Kibana key store. Uh, so if you recall, one of the purpose of this script is to set up a Kibana key store that will store all the sensitive and secret information uh, that our service needs so that all the information is actually encrypted in this file. If this file already exists, it means that we've already run the setup before and everything has been initialized. And if that were the case, there's no need to run the setup, uh, this setup script ever again. Right? So then I'll just exit this script if the Kibana key store already exists. So this is important to know because if you plan to restart your entire Elk network, your, if you plan to restart your entire Elasticsearch network, just remember to delete this file. Right? Only if you delete this file then will this script run again, right? And this Kibana key store will be found in the, in the key store uh, directory over here, okay? So again, this setup.sh file, it's a responsibility. One of the responsibilities is to set up the key store to store any information that's uh, used in, uh, for your services throughout the entirety of the project. If you need to completely rebuild the whole network, just scrap, uh, scrap all your database. Just make sure you also delete this key store before restarting your network. Okay. Now, if the key store doesn't exist, then we go ahead and create the necessary users for the Kibana service and initialize the key store. But to do that, uh, I need to make sure that all these variables are not empty. Okay. If they're empty, I'm just going to prompt you to type it in. 
right? And some of these variables are actually carried over from the environment file. So if we go over here, the initial elastic password, it's going to be over here. And the encryption key, it's here. So these are actually just passed along to Docker Compose. Right? They pass along to Docker Compose, and then Docker Compose will pass it along to this setup script here. Okay. And we're only going to use the Elastic Super User uh, password once for this initial setup. Afterwards, you can change your Elastic Super User password through Kibana uh, because we're never going to use it again. After, uh, or we're never going to use it after the setup. Okay. Coming back to our shell script file here. All right, so uh, I'll explain why I commented this out and I'll explain why I commented this out. I'll explain it a little bit later, but let's talk about the things that do work. So the first thing I'm doing here is uh, I just wanna, to establish a connection between Kibana and Elasticsearch, we're gonna use something called the Kibana token to do this. And I've explained this in my earlier videos where I do a deep dive on how to set up uh, Elk stack without Docker Compose. So you can always refer to those videos for more in-depth explanation of that. In fact, uh, I'll leave a link to those videos in the description of this video. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to pull up some documentation so you can quickly see what this line is all about. All right, so this is the documentation for the service account token API. And basically what we can do is we can create a special token that Kibana can use. Uh, and Kibana will use this token to do ongoing communication with the Elasticsearch platform. So if you make a RESTful API call to this endpoint, then you should get results that look like this. You'll get a token back that looks like this. And we need to parse this token out and store it in our Kibana key store so that it can be used by Kibana for authentication uh, with Elasticsearch. So what you're gonna see is First thing I'm doing here is I'm gonna delete any prior uh, existing Kibana service tokens first, because if one already exists, we can't really uh, make a new one. So let's just, let's just delete the old one first, and then we go ahead and create a new one. Right? So this is just making a curl request to the API endpoint, this API endpoint, which is specified up here. Right, it's really this endpoint, but we replaced uh, the, these triangles uh, with the actual token name and the appropriate namespace and services. Right, And once we get a response back, I'm just going to store it in a text file called result. And this result file basically will have a content that looks like this. And then I'm going to use some regular expression magic to parse out just this file, uh, just this value out of the JSON object. So if you see here, all the content is loaded into this results file. Then I'll just use some regular expression magic uh, to parse out this value. And once I've parsed it out, I'm gonna use the Kibana key store to save it. Here, I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger so it's easier to see. All right, so once I have um, uh, used regular expression and some uh, search and replace, I'm going to store that value inside uh, the Kibana key store for this particular property of the kibana.yaml file. Okay, If you don't know how this key store thing works or what this property means, uh, just I guess a simpler explanation is that this property, normally you can actually see it in a kibana.yaml file, but instead of explicitly uh, writing it into our kibana.yaml file, we're just going to load it into the Kibana key store and the Kibana key store will automatically populate this field with whatever we've done here uh, the moment you spin up Kibana. Right? And once it's in the key store, it's also encrypted. So uh, it's not going to be in plain text for bad actors to read. Okay, So that's how we're going to uh, set up the key store. And by the way, when you create uh, run this command, it will actually create the file in this directory over here. So the moment you run this command, it will load, it'll create this file. And this file 
will automatically encrypt that value over here. Okay, so that's uh, what this command will do. The other thing we're gonna do is we're just going to put also the encryption key into the Kibana key store as well. And we're gonna set, use that key store value to populate these three additional fields in our kibana.yaml file. Uh, and this will open up other particular functionality and features within Kibana, uh, namely things like the alerts and reporting section. Oh, and there's actually one more thing I think I should mention. It's that, uh, how do you know that this Kibana key store binary file isn't exactly this location that I've specified? Well, uh, if it's ever incorrect, uh, or you find that it doesn't seem to be working, what you can do is you can actually just uh, go into the actual container itself. Let me see if my project is actually running. Okay, so it looks like my project is actually running. Um, let me make this a little bit easier to see. And let's uh, do this. Dot names and dot Okay, so let's take a look at the Kibana container. So I'm going to docker exec and we're going to log into this container with just basic shell all right and i'll do ls hyphen alh in fact let me just do this so my present working direct uh, my present working directory is the usr shared kibana uh, directory and in here you do see uh, there's a file or folder here called bin so let's go into the bin and actually here this is these are all the binary executables and you can see that the kibana key store is here so the full command for running the key store is this plus kibana key store so let me exit out of here And that's how I arrived at, uh, that's how I located this command uh, uh, for this shell script. Okay, and the other thing I'll mention is that one of the secrets we uh, I originally wanted to store was this, uh, the APM token. So the APM token is actually gonna be put into your Python web app later so that uh, it's gonna be used to authenticate any instrumented data that gets sent to the fleet server. I had trouble uh, actually storing this value inside the key store. That's why I've commented out for here. Even this line here, I don't know if this is particularly the correct syntax for doing it. So if anyone knows how to actually use the key store with APM token or to add the APM token to the key store, let me know. I've actually posted a question like this to a few discussion forums. And if I ever get a result back, I'll post a follow-up to this video or I'll state the solution inside the comments or in the description of this video. All right, so once all this has been made, one thing I need to do was move the Kibana key store to a more uh, persistent and a more persistent space because this Kibana key store, by default, it's made within the config directory. And I have not volume mounted or bind mounted the config directory for Kibana. So the moment you destroy your service, or the container, there's a possibility you may lose your key store. And if you lose your key store, your Kibana service can't connect to Elasticsearch anymore. So what I've done is I'm just gonna copy this key store over to uh, a volume, not volume, uh, a bind mounted directory. So this Kibana key store directory is bind mounted to our actual host machine's key store directory. So by moving this file from the container into my bind mounted directory, it will, this kibana.keystore will be available for other services to use later on. And just to confirm that this directory is bind mounted, what we can do is let's open up the Docker compose file. And if you come up to the, oh, actually just right here. So let's see, 
I've got the data directory here. Here it is. So on my host machine, I have a key store directory, and that will bind and mount to the containers USR share Kibana key store directory, which is this over here. So now we'll never lose our key, uh, Kibana key store file. It'll be usable later on in the future. And then uh, just change some permissions. I don't know if the 777 is the best. Uh, it's something that I'll explore later on when I have more time. Or if any one of you decide that there's a better, uh, a, re a reduced privilege uh, that seems to work, just mention, the, uh, mention in the comments for us to try out. And then I just do an echo all done and I'll wait 20, uh, two minutes before ending this script. Uh, this is optional. I think it just helped me keep the container alive long enough for this health check uh, to do what it needs to do. Okay. So I think that's the kibana.sh file. Uh, once this kibana setup is done, that's when, uh, and this is healthy, then we the Kibana service here actually has the ability to use the credentials from this key store to do its actual connection to Elasticsearch. So you'll see that over here, I don't mention any Elasticsearch super user uh, credentials at all. When loading up this Kibana service, it'll completely rely on this Kibana.keystore, which has the Kibana user to do the connection. All right, so that's how this Kibana setup service is related and interacts with the eventual Kibana service. And you're going to see that everything I've done for these other services, it's the same approach and tactic with just minor path and syntax differences. So let's look at metric beat next. Now, if I come to the metric beat setup uh, service, you'll see that it follows a very similar workflow to the Kibana setup service. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check out the metric beat uh, image because it'll have all the commands that I'm going to need to run uh, to set up the metric beat user and set up the, uh, the, the metric beat key store and any other privileges. And this image here is exactly the same image as your ultimate metric beat service. Right? So once I've done that, uh, all, I'd, uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to bind mount this beat setup dot shell script file that I've made because we're actually going to run it over here. And here, I, again, I'm just passing in the host, uh, the Elasticsearch host, Elastic Super User, Elastic Super User password, any email you want to associate with the, the actual metric beat user that you're about to make. And hyphen B, uh, I'm just saying for this beat sh or this beat setup sh file, we're going to set up metric beat. I could change this to file beat, or if we're going to do audit beat or packet beat or heart beat or whatever it is, just change it to the appropriate value. And you'll know what value it is if you actually look in the uh, shell file, which we'll do in a moment, because I'll just list the values for you to choose from in a moment. All right, and then we know that this setup has been uh, completed if the metric beat .key store is uh, actually exists. So this command here will create a metric beat key store. It's actually going to uh, uh, create this file within a volume mounted directory, which is this directory. So by placing the metric beat key store, this file in here, you're basically putting it into the Docker volume over here, which this metric beat service later on over here, uh, this metric beat service can then therefore use this key store to log in. That's why in here, you don't see any mention of any username because it's just gonna, uh, or any username or, use, or passwords because it relies on the key store over here. The use of the, elas uh, of the Elastic Search, uh, the Elastic User's password, again, it's only a one-time thing. It's only for the initial setup of, this, uh, of these beat services. And afterwards, we can change the password and it'll never be used again by this Docker Compose file or any of these other services. All right, so uh, that's how this metric beat setup uh, service works. Let's take a look at this file then. Okay, you're gonna see that it follows a very similar flow to the Kibana, dot, uh, the Kibana setup.sh file. These are some of the arguments I'll be needing, right? When you're setting up a metric beat user, you need a, an email 
and that's basically it. Uh, I, I'm gonna decide what the username and password is afterwards. All right, so beat uh, this flag here, hyphen B for beat. Either you can choose metric beat, file beat, audit beat, packet beat, or hard beat. In this particular Docker Compose project, we're only doing metric beat and file beat. But you're gonna find that the workflow is the same, which is why I can reuse this script for every single one of these beats. All right, if you don't tell me what beat it is, I'll just say, well, we need it to be able to create. Oh, actually, that's not what this line is. What this line is doing is, if our key store already exists, then we can exit and don't and we don't need to do any of this setup. Right? So again, if you plan to completely restart your project, make sure you delete uh, all the volumes. And because this is a volume mounted uh, directory, it's not bind mounted. If it's bind mounted, normally I would bind mount the key stores to this directory over here. But because this is volume mounted, if you really want to clear all your metric beat key stores, you'll have to do, uh, let's see, doc compose down and make sure you have this volumes, okay? So if you were to run this, this will delete all the volume data associated with your services and that will clear the metric beat and file beat key stores as well, right? So I'm not gonna do that because uh, we actually wanna keep our key stores for now. And because we've kept our key stores, then none of the scripts below here will run. But if you're running this for the first time, your key store doesn't exist, then we will go ahead and continue on. Right? Make sure we have all these arguments set. If not, let's prompt for these arguments. And then I'm gonna create a random password for this metric beat user. So I've just listed an array of uh, letters and numbers, and we'll create a random 10 character password that we're gonna use for this new user. So again, I'm just checking here, if the key store doesn't exist, let's actually first create a new metric beat user. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, create a new metric beat user. And actually give me a moment, what, oh, no, this is not the user, this is a role. I'm gonna create a metric beat role with just these privileges. Uh, for publishing. So this metric beat user here is responsible for just publishing data. It's not gonna do setup of the appropriate data views or setting up indexes and such. It's only for publishing information to existing views or uh, or existing uh, ind indices, okay? So that's this role. So we're setting up a role. Then we go ahead and set up a user uh, to leverage this role. And just a note, I've done this here, but I don't actually end up using this user within my Docker Compose project. Uh, I've left it here in case I choose to do it later on, in case I wanna use this role and user later on. But what I really did for this project was, I just skipped all that, and to keep things simple, I used a super user uh, for uh, maintaining maintaining uh, connection between metric beat and elastic search. So you can see here that the role I'm using is super user. Right? So feel free to downgrade this to the appropriate uh, roles and uh, privileges if you'd like to. Uh, I just felt for now, for demonstration purposes, it was just easier to use a super user or a user with the super user role. And if you wanna know more about how to create users through the REST API, let me show you the documentation. Okay, so you can see this is the API that I used for creating a new user, and you'll get a response back that looks like this. And this is the API used for creating roles, and you'll get a response that comes back looking like this. Then I just atti attach this role to whatever user I'm about to make. So that's these two instructions here. Create a role, then attach it to a user. This one is uh, just create a super user. And that's basically all this does. I'll store everything to the key store right afterwards. Once it's stored to the key store, I actually need to create a variable called beat pass. And that variable is used by metric beat.yaml. So you can see, if I scroll down a bit, here it is. All right, so this variable is loaded from the key store. The Kibana key store doesn't require you to explicitly list the field and list the variable, 
but the Beats library does. So that's one difference between the way the Kibana key store works and the Beats key store works. So that's basically uh, all we did for setting up the metric beat uh, user and, uh, and setting up the metric beat key store so that it's used by metric beat. When we talk about file beat, it's exactly the same setup scripts. So very similar configuration with the file beat service. So if I come over here, all right, so you can see here, the file beat setup service and the and the actual file beat service it follows exactly the same format as metric beat because it also uses the beat.sh file and then i pass in file beat as an argument but otherwise it's exactly the same as metric beat all right so let's talk about log stash next now within log stash, it's again, a similar workflow. Here is our log stash setup service. And this is the, uh, ultimately the log stash service. With the log stash setup, I'm going to actually have to bind mount the key store as opposed to volume mounting, which means that, uh, when we ultimately create this log stash key store, it's going to be within this directory within the container which means it's uh, mounted to this uh, directory on my host machine. So if you actually look over here, you can see here's our log stash key store right here. All right, so where am I? I was over, all oh, right, I have to go up. All right, so here's our log stash setup container. Uh, I bind mount the key store. I'm gonna bind mount my actual setup uh, shell script file. Then I'll run it using the same, similar arguments to the beat setup, except I don't have to specify beats here because it's just log stash service. And if the log stash key store exists, then we say that this setup service is healthy, in which case we go ahead and run the log stash uh, service. The log stash service will leverage the key store that was made in this previous service over here. And I think that's pretty much it. So let's just take a look at what this log stash setup script looks like. And similar workflow to the Kibana setup and the beats setup. If the log stash key store exists, then just exit this script. If it doesn't exist, go ahead and create a random password. And the user we're gonna make is called the log stash publish user. And for simplicity's sake, I just gave it the super user role. I didn't try to reduce its privileges. Once that's been made, I go ahead and set up a Kibana key store. I take the random password that I've made here and store it to the key store. And I'm gonna have it accessed through a variable called output pass. Because what you're gonna see is in our log stash dot configuration file, we're actually gonna use the password here. So this password here is gonna read from this key store here. Then I'm gonna move the log stash key store from the configuration directory because by default, when you run this log stash key store command, it's going to create the key store within the config directory. But this config directory is not volume or bind mounted in any way. And what I'm gonna do is this, I'm just gonna copy this log stash key store over to this directory over here. And then, because this directory here is bind mounted, and then it'll be usable by future log stash services provided we mount it as well. And that's all this script does. All right, just create a new user, add the password to the key store so that it can be used over here. And now the password will never be visible publicly and it's also not relying on the Elastic Super User account. Okay, and that's basically all there is for the fleet, uh, for the log stash uh, service setup. Let me go back up. Yeah, that's all there is for log stash service setup. 
Okay, so I think we're going to talk about the fleet server and APM last. So we'll talk about this next. So here I do have a fleet server setup.sh file. And that would be this one over here. But let's look at the doc compose file first. All right, so for fleet server, we start up with the fleet server setup container before actually initializing the fleet server. And we don't have an actual key store, so I probably should rename or use a different directory a little bit later on. Uh, but the goal of the fleet server setup container is to just create a new user for doing the configuration with the fleet server. All right, so I've bind mounted the key store directory uh, because I'll store let's say a lock file or flag file to denote that the fleet server has been set up or all the necessary configurations are made before running the fleet server. And that lock file or flag file is really this elastic agent .initialized. As long as this file exists, then I'll consider the setup as being complete. There's really nothing in this file. I think I just typed in hello world, but its existence will mean that this is healthy. All right, so let's take a look at what this fleet server setup.sh file does. Okay, so it follows a very similar structure to all the other services. If this, uh, oh, actually this is incorrect. I need to fix this right now. It's not key store because if we look over here, uh, tab new docker compose.yaml, it should be elastic agent dot initialized. So I should rename this initialized All right so if this file uh exists then we don't need to do anything else All right so but if it doesn't exist then we go ahead and create a new user um and the username being your apm username or the end yeah the apm username which we specified in our env file so this one over here so we're gonna create a new user called APM user, and we're gonna use just this user to do the remaining fleet server setup. And once this user has been made, we go ahead and just create that elastic agent.initialize file so that this script never runs again. So once the user has been made, we can actually run the fleet server container. And the fleet server container will actually use the APM user and APM pass that we specified in the previous uh, setup container up here. Once the fleet server has actually been set up, you actually no longer need these lines anymore. So we can actually delete these. And uh, that way, the APM user credentials are can be scrambled within your .environment file and no one will ever be able to use them ever again, right? So this information is only used for the first time. And that's basically all there is for this uh, fleet server. In fact, now that everything is actually up and running, here, let me quit this for a moment, because I actually do have uh, all my services running, I really should update my doc compose file to never again rely on uh, the, the sensitive information. So I think those were the Kibana flags, which I've removed. And the other piece of sensitive information is up here. I don't need this line anymore. And within the environment file, I should just change these. Redacted. And uh, I'm just using the word redacted to let myself know I'm not actually using this variable anymore. And let's say redacted. Redacted. Okay, and I don't actually delete them like this because again, this is an experiment and I may not have done all the proper null checks and empty checks. Uh, so if a variable is not declared, it may cause some issues with my shell scripts. 
if you if someone has time, feel free to upgrade the scripts further so that they can accept completely empty values. Right. So I'm gonna restart things. And everything should still work without needing to rely on any sensitive information anymore. So that's basically how uh, how all this was done. And that explains every single line of code in uh, that I've changed. If anything is, if I've missed anything or if anything's unclear, just leave some uh, questions in the comment section and I'll try to reply to them. Or the easiest way to contact me is still through email. So if you just go to our website, evermite.com slash contact, send me an email there. Those I for sure check frequently and I'll be able to reply there as well.